Please listen carefully. Hello, universe. Welcome to the Optimist Daily Update. I'm Ariel Tienko. And I'm Christy Jansen. And we are part of the team behind the Optimist Daily, making solutions the news. We bring you reader-funded solutions news every day in order to change the tenor of news media, social media, and the direction of your day to help us all get focused on solutions. Seven days a week, we publish positive news stories written by award-winning journalists and delivered online to your inbox and through our social channels. And also, we are sharing these solutions in a commute-worthy, walk-worthy, meet-the-parents-worthy podcast. Today is Tuesday, May 10th, 2022. How did the Bo meeting the parents thing go over the weekend, Ariel? It went really well, actually. Yeah, I, I talked to Summers about it on another podcast that we recorded and let the listeners know that my boyfriend was going to meet the family for the first time. <laughs> he might have been a little overwhelmed, not just with personalities, but with food. <laughs> He's like, I'm gaining weight and it's been two days. But that's okay. That's just how we bond in my family. <laughs> over food. And this is the first time we're connecting since the weekend as well. So how was your Mother's Day celebration? It was very sweet. I ended up going out to lunch with my son and friends. It was just really nice. It was a very mothery day kind of oh, thing. That's lovely. Did he get you anything nice? No. He's... <laughs> I, f- I felt lucky that he said happy Mother's Day and consented to have lunch with me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Our gift for my mom wasn't uh, amazing either, although she really enjoyed it. We just uh, drove to the movies and bought her popcorn from the movies because it just tastes a lot better. (laughs) I know. It's true. Did you go to the movies or just got the popcorn from the concession stand? Yeah, we just got the popcorn and left. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Well, should we just uh, get into the news today? Yeah, let's jump into our news here. Uh, Why don't you go first? You have a very interesting article, and I want to hear your take on it all. All right. Well, the headline that I chose today says, Tasmania becomes one of the world's first carbon negative places. And I thought that that was really cool because we hear a lot about carbon neutral, which is also a good step in the right direction. But At this rate, we should be focusing a lot on carbon negative emissions. Well, just before you go, why don't you explain what a negative carbon emission is? You know, like, what does that mean? Okay, so carbon negative emissions actually means pretty much what it sounds like. So carbon neutral is you're not emitting more CO2 into the atmosphere than you're absorbing. Saving, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your net emissions are are flat, but in this case by having more trees or something, right? Or by suck, they're somehow absorbing more carbon than the country is admitting. Yeah, and they actually are able to do this because they've cut down on logging activities. And uh, as most of us know, trees are really great resources for absorbing and containing carbon in our atmosphere. Okay, so Tasmania has been pinpointed or identified as one of these places that were able to achieve net carbon negative emissions because of a study that came from the Australian National University and Griffith University. Scientists have analyzed the country's greenhouse gas stock by looking at each state's share of emissions. And then they saw that Tasmania had made a quote-unquote remarkable achievement. According to Brendan Mackey, Griffith University researcher, Tasmania has gone from being the emitter of carbon dioxide to now removing more than it is emitting to the atmosphere. The mitigation benefits is about 22 million tons of carbon dioxide a year. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty impressive because outside of Tasmania, Bhutan and Suriname are the only two countries in the world to be able to claim a carbon negative achievement. And it's mainly because they've reduced the harvesting of their native forests. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the main changes then have to do with Tasmania's approach to forest management. Mm -hmm. That's exciting. I just wrote about mother trees, you know, in my Mother's Day spotlight for the view last weekend and how important old forests are to forest ecosystems, but also there are key component in sequestering carbon. Yeah, exactly. The changes 
that Tasmania took didn't happen right now. They actually took place in 2011 and in 2012. And according to Professor Mackey, that was when there was a significant drop in native forest logging in Tasmania. And that's when we saw this big change in the greenhouse gas inventory reports. So what Tasmania can teach the rest of the world is to really invest in forest management, and maybe places can replicate how they've managed their forests and especially reduced native forest logging, as you mentioned. And I'll just finish off my story with a last quote from Professor Mackey. He says, It is vital we protect and enhance natural forest ecosystem carbon stocks and that the mitigation benefits of forest protection are properly accounted for and reported to help us achieve the deep and rapid cuts in emissions needed over the coming critical decade. I like it. And it's interesting that it took so many, you know, almost 10 years to really have the benefits show up. Well, my story is also talking a little bit about Well, it's related to our changing climate, but it's a little bit different because my headline is about renewable energy, which is one solution that we're moving towards getting away from using fossil fuels. The headline reads, Germany makes renewable energy cheaper for households and businesses. This article is about the fact that Germany, which has been including a small surcharge for every kilowatt of renewable uh, generated energy in everybody's electricity bills is now dropping that renewable surcharge on power bills as of July 1st, 2022. And I'm sure this is linked to the fact that they want to invest more and more in renewable energy, moving away from subsidizing the fossil fuel use in the Germany power makeup. But the renewable surcharge was a necessary action that helped to fund the country's shift towards renewable power over the past two decades. But federal government parliament, the Bundestag, has decided to eliminate the charge that's connected to renewable sources of energy for households and for businesses in response to the shortage of Russian gas, the war in Ukraine, and the overall need to reduce dependency on fossil fuels. So now it's almost like a subsidy towards the renewable energy. Anyway, this is a small little story, but it will result in an average German family looking towards savings of approximately 300 euros per year. So it's not insubstantial and it would effectively remove the renewable levy that are added to power bills. In addition, they're asking the electricity suppliers to transparently lower their prices so they can't just add charge to something else to make up for this, the money that will be lost here. And in order to continue to fund the renewable installations across the country, the government and the state energy and climate fund is still receiving revenue from something called emissions trading, which is a tool that's pretty widely deployed across the EU countries to keep carbon emissions in check by putting environmental costs on company balance sheets. So it's basically like you're talking about net zero. This is like looking at if each company has like a budget of greenhouse gas emissions that they're allowed to uh, emit. And if the company emits more than that allotted amount, it has to buy an, an allowance for each additional ton of CO2 equivalent or, or greenhouse gases. And then those allowances can be traded between companies. And this is something that we do here in the US too. I, I think Tesla is a, makes a lot of money by trading their negative emissions. The German government, their energy and climate fund also receives revenue from emissions trading. So by installing more renewables, they get to trade those credits for companies to get that net zero benefit. So it's all a shell game a little bit. (laughs) (laughs) Anything that can make renewable energy generation cheaper than carbon-based electricity is important at this point. I was looking at installing um, a heat pump in my house as opposed to having the a furnace but it's so much more expensive and the, and also the this company that came in to give me a quote was trying to sell me an air conditioner which we don't have so actually if i had done this transition it would have ended up adding to our energy consumption yes i wouldn't have natural gas for the furnace anymore but on the other hand now i'd have a much bigger electricity bill cuz i'd have air conditioning which i don't really need and whatever rebates were there were so negligible it was like a thousand dollars, and the the system that they were quoting me was like close to like twenty thousand dollars. I'm like, this is ridiculous. There's no way. Yeah, we need to make the shift to renewable energy more accessible. I keep reading about how heat pumps are the answer, and unless there's a real concerted effort at the regulation level, and and there's actually mm-hmm. some cost sharing, 
it's never going to happen. So a little bit disheartening there. <laughs> I mean, maybe there is a solution that we can write about for maybe this problem is. that you've yeah. pointed out. The whole thing about uh, solutions-based news is that we do have to recognize the problems in order to mm-hmm. address them. So, you know, all steps in the right direction. All steps in the right direction, right. Well, I guess we should probably wrap this up for this Tuesday morning. Yeah. <laughs> what other headlines are out there today? Ariel. All right. So we have a headline that reads, these U.S. companies have expanded their abortion benefits to support employees. Does one moldy berry ruin the bunch? Here's what the experts say. New computing method predicts traffic faster. And health data policies need to come into play. Anything else? There's a certain bacteria in your gut, which might influence chances of stroke. More than money is needed to take down global poverty. Denmark will build the first energy island in the world. And for Nurses Week, Crocs, the company Crocs, gives away shoes and scrubs to medical professionals. That and so much more on theoptimistdaily.com. Thanks, everybody, for listening to the Optimist Daily Update. We promise to keep sharing our positive solution-based stories with ideas on how you can engage in this world and participate in helping to change it for the good. We promise to keep covering current events, current issues, current solutions with accurate, legitimate sources and offer you the information that we all need to chart new paths for all of us. If you're not already, then please consider becoming an emissary on theoptimistdaily.com. And starting at just $5 a month, you can help support reader-funded independent journalism, which is what we do here at The Optimist Daily. If that's not an option for you right now, then you can also support us for free by sharing us on your socials, share a story on your Instagram, and please leave us positive reviews for our podcast on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Be part of the solution-changing consciousness and addressing our world's biggest challenges with a problem-solving mindset. Let's keep The Optimist Daily free to all who need it, supported by those who can. Thanks everyone, and we will be back tomorrow with more solutions.